Hi, in this and the next lecture, I will talk about messages and variables. Messages and variables are the ways by which nodes can communicate with each other and pass data to each other. So here we'll start with messages. And I've already set a couple of uh, examples here to walk you through and present some of the features that you should know about with messages and how to use them. Of course, there is a documentation that you should really look at to get all of the details. And um, I encourage you to do that. Messaging uh, as well as flows is a powerful way for data interchange within flows or across actually multiple flows in your node red installation uh, here i just want to keep things very very practical and applicable to the project that you are about to begin i've also used the documentation feature via the comment node as you can see right here i've created a couple of comment codes and i've been doing that as well throughout this course where i provide information that you should be aware of for each particular flow under each particular tab so here for example um, i'll be using a bit of json i'm giving you the uh, origin of the json object that i'm using as a test and also the link to the documentation that i've shown you here so look around for these bubbles that contain further information. So um, let's have a look at messages. As I said, the primary way of communication between nodes. I've got a bunch of inject nodes here. And actually to show you how these work, what I'll do is I will disable them. So you can see I have selected a bunch of nodes and I can go here and then enable or disable them. So let's say that I want to disable these nodes so they're not really executed and available for execution. And that leaves me with just these two. I'm going to drill inside the timestamp payload uh, node and you can see that the payload of this uh, node is actually a message, MSG is the only thing that it can be. And I've given it a particular value. I've just taken a timestamp. I'm going to show you how to do the same thing with a string in a moment. Now, what happens is that this timestamp or whatever it is that you want to pass on to the next node will be stored as payload of the message object. So let's see what that means inside the debug uh, note, I'm just taking whatever I've got inside the payload attribute of the message object and I'm printing it out. So let's deploy the flow and I'm going to manually trigger the timestamp inject node and actually switch to the debug messages view and see what we get on the other side. So that's what we get. So this is the message payload. So just one component out of the message object. And I've I think I've shown you this before. This is um, uh, a, a date, uh, but you can uh, uh, scroll through a variety of representations for this same value. Right now, I'm going to make a small change to my debug node. So go in the node and then change the output from message.payload to the complete message object. And that will show us exactly what is being passed from one node to the other through messaging. So clear the debug window and then trigger the inject node. And here is the complete message. So inside the complete message, we've got the payload, which contains the date, which we've already seen, plus this attribute here, a message ID. And depending on what else the message is, it may contain other uh, types of attributes in here. So now that we know that the message object contains other attributes, what I can do is copy that, go into my debug mode, back into message and just replace the payload with the message ID. And you can probably guess what this is going to do. It just gives us the message ID. That may be useful in some circumstances, but in this case, it's more useful if we have the payload. So I'm going to uh, get this back into the payload um, configuration for the output. And always deploy your flow when you make a change for the change to be effective. Okay, it's back to normal.
Now I want to take you back to a previous example, the DHC22 example, and I'm going to enable this flow so I can show you. So here we've got a sequence of nodes, and of course each node is connected to the next one and passes data via a message. So now I want to have a closer look to what those messages look like and see the differences between messages that are passed on and created by different nodes. So again, I'm going to use a series of uh, debug nodes and just to keep this short, I'm just going to give them numbers. So this is going to be the first one and I want to see the complete message object. I'm going to take out another one and connect it to the trigger node and I'm going to make that a two and complete message and another debug node for the DHC22 node and it's going to be number three and again I want to see the complete message and I don't need to do that for the last one actually no yeah I don't need to so I will deploy this flow and I will switch to debug clean it up and trigger this flow and now you can see what is happening. You've got the first debug node, and here is its payload, the complete payload. The second one looks like this as well. Uh, nothing fancy in it. But the third one, which is coming out of the DHT22 node, you can see that it contains more uh, attributes. So there is the message ID, like the other two uh, messages. But then the rest contains information that is specific to the DHT22 node. So there's the payload with the temperature, and there's the humidity, whether it's valid, and a, bit, a few other things, such as the topic, location, and sensor ID that we have configured in the sensor node. So it's just to show you that the actual message configuration uh, depends on the node that creates the message, but they all have a few shared attributes such as the message ID, and they all do have the payload attribute. Okay, I'm going to disable uh, the DHG22 example flow so that it does not continue to produce output and go back into my messages tab. Let's uh, continue with the example. So I'm going to disable the timestamp and the timestamp payload and then enable these two. So on and on. This is similar to the first example, except that I now have a string payload. So um, I, I, I can actually create payloads of different kinds, like string numbers, booleans, etc. I'm going to show you an a adjacent example in a moment as well. And whatever it is, it will just pass through to the next node. Uh, which should be able to do something with it. So the next node here is just a debug. I'm printing out the complete message object to the monitor here, and it looks like this. Oops, I need to deploy. There you go. Clean up, and now trigger the inject node. So there's the payload, uh, the full payload object. I can switch back to the message payload only. Now you know what this is about to do. And it looks like this. So we just have the string coming through uh, the debug window. Now let's have a look at something more interesting. And to do that, I will disable these two nodes and then enable the payload node, the JSON payload node. So uh, what I've got in this inject uh, node is a valid JSON document, which looks like this. You can actually use a visual editor, which is very handy if you want to do um, some more detailed work. Or, of course, you can use an external JSON editor. The reason that JSON is very important in Node-RED is because Node-RED, as you know, is built on Node.js, which is a JavaScript framework. And uh, JSON is fundamental in the JavaScript world. It is an important standard for data interchange and for data storage. So 
In particular, if, for example, you work with IoT services, it is likely that those IoT services will be using JSON to receive and send data. So it is good to have um, basic working understanding of JSON. So to demonstrate how to play around with JSON in Node.js, I'm starting with this example JSON document. So from here, you can send it off to a debug um, window to see what it looks like. So I'm going to enable this node here and deploy my new flow, or my updated flow, and then trigger the inject node. And this is the simplest thing that you can do. You can see now that the JSON document is part of the payload. It is inside payload, and you can actually see its various uh, nodes here. You can see the data in the JSON document. From inside the debug window, you can not just see the JSON document that is part of the payload, but also copy its path of any part of the document that you want to work with. For example, um, I can use this copy path function. Now the path is in the clipboard and I can paste it in a text editor or you can see that later you can also use this path if you want to process the JSON document itself. I'll give you an example in a moment. So this kind of browser is very useful. Let's move on to the next uh, example. I'm going to disable the JSON payload um, node and enable the next one here which is the json payload right so now i'm using not the message payload output but the json expression output and let's see what this does i'm going to clean up and deploy and trigger so now we have the actual object printed out into the debug window so this is not the full payload object, but just the JSON object itself. Now this is good, but still not very useful. Uh, let's say, for example, that you wanted to extract a particular value. It could be the ID value for this gloss entry object, or it could be the abbreviated uh, attribute or brief attribute that you see here. How do you do that? Well, there's a few ways to do that. Um, probably the easiest, uh, in my opinion, is to use a little bit of JavaScript, because remember that JSON and JavaScript are very closely related. So let's try this out. I will disable this node and then enable these two nodes. Let's go to the information window and enable these two. All right. So what I've got here is a JSON node. You can find a JSON node in your toolbox on the side and it looks like this. Now, what I've shown you so far is interesting. Uh, it does give us an idea of how the message object and its payload works. But if we want to focus specifically on JSON, uh, we'd like to be able to do something more useful with it. For example, we'd like to be able to extract a specific item out of the JSON or a specific value out of the JSON document and show it. So I'm going to show you the last example that I've prepared for you here which is composed by these three nodes. Remember that JSON and JavaScript are very closely related. So the easiest way to extract data out of a JSON document is to use a bit of JavaScript. And of course, there are other ways to do this that you can learn about in the documentation. So here's an example. I've got a function node and you can access a function node through the side uh, toolbar and there is a function node you can just drop it onto your flow so inside the function node you can write a bit of javascript now remember that the uh, function receives a message that contains a payload just like any other uh, node does and you can access the payload 
using the msg.payload notation. But because this payload contains JSON, a JSON document, we can then use further dot notation to access the individual values and attributes of the JSON document. So let's say, I'm just going to cancel that for a second. I'm going to show you my JSON document and you can see that down here, we've got access to the documentation, which I have uh, copied in. Uh, the JSON document itself looks like this. So let's say that I would like to get the value of the title attribute. Then what we do is to say uh, JSON document dot glossary dot title, and that will return example glossary. You can do the same thing elsewhere. And I also remind you, uh, let me show you, I'm going to enable this document here, or this node here, I should say. I could also have enabled the other one down the bottom, but it's okay. So let's go into the uh, debug window and I'm going to trigger this and now look at the JSON payload uh, debug node output, which is this one here. We have the JSON object. We can drill down to it, but I just wanted to remind you that you can copy the path of the attribute that we want to extract the value of by clicking on this copy path button, whichever one it is. And then we can paste that into our JSON right here to complete the, uh, the expression for the attribute that we want to extract from the JSON document. So in this case, I have configured my function node to have two outputs and that allows it to have two outputs visually produced in the node itself. And I can connect each of those out outputs to a different debug node. For those outputs, I want to pass on two data items. The first one is a title, which I can retrieve with a dot notation like this. And the second one is the acronym which again, I can retrieve from the JSON document like this. And then in my return statement, I've got an array. And in the array, I've got two tiny Java, uh, JSON documents. Both have got a payload and then whatever it is that I want to pass, which is the title. And for the second one is the acronym. So with that done, I can then just uh, pass that information to a debug node like this. This one is for the title because it's on, it's on the first one. And this one is the acronym because it's the second one. All right, deploy. Actually, I just uh, disable the first payload just to keep my output clean. And deploy, uh, clean the debug window and trigger. And there's your example glossary and then the SGML values printed out. That's a simple way to extract uh, the values I want out of a JSON document. That's actually enough to uh, allow us to continue with the project. But as I said, there's a lot more that you can do with messages. Uh, and I encourage you to have a, at least a quick look at this documentation page to learn more about it. Now, in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about variables and how you can use variables to also pass information between nodes.